Wuna Jung Siang, everybody. My name is Matthew. I am your BRS beginner guru. I am personally committed. You guys don't know how committed I am to try my best to convince every single beginner out there that it is a pain, it costs a lot of money, but it is in your best interest and in the best interest of your livestock to set up a quarantine tank. I feel like I'm a broken record here, but there's gonna be a ton of information in this video, but stay tuned for episode 35 because we're gonna take everything we learned and teach you how to quarantine fish. What is a quarantine tank? It's a separate aquarium from your main display tank that is used to isolate, observe, and treat sick fish. Really at the heart of it, a quarantine tank is meant to prevent disease and illness from entering your display tank. Do you need to set up a quarantine tank? I'm gonna give you four reasons why you need to, plus an anecdote. Reason number one, it's gonna save you time. Reason number two, it's gonna save you money. Reason number three, it will keep you in this hobby for a lot longer. And reason number four, it's the ethical choice. I was contacted over a year ago now by a total newbie over in England. He was a copper. He had a couple kids, super nice guy. I helped him set up his tank. We went back and forth. They sent him a lot of voice memos. We even did some FaceTime chatting to really get him dialed in. He was super stoked. He bought this like 70 gallon aquarium, all this high tech gear, and then started buying fish. But guess what the one piece of advice he ignored? He didn't ignore it. He just chose not to do it. It was the quarantine tank. Things were going well. He spent thousands of dollars. I mean, he was working overtime shifts to be able to afford to pay for his brand new setup. He went to his local fish store, started getting corals, gorgeous, beautiful. Started getting fish, he had more questions, I would help him, everything was going great. Then he decided there was one more fish he needed. He went back to the same local fish store that he always went to, brought it back, didn't quarantine, put it in his tank, guess what happened? It had ick. And that ick was passed to every single member of his tank. He had started his tank six months before and he was so disheartened that he broke everything down and sold it for pennies on the dollar. His experience is not an isolated experience. Trust me, I have heard this so many times. You may think you're gonna get lucky and you may for a while, but at some point your luck is going to run out. Typically in this hobby, when we talk about quarantine tanks, we're referring to fish quarantine tanks and that is gonna absolutely be the focus of this video. But are there other hobbyists out there who quarantine other things, other cleanup crew members, anemones, corals? Absolutely. I'm actually running three quarantine tanks myself right now. I have a fish only quarantine tank that's currently empty. I have an anemone specific quarantine tank and I have a coral quarantine tank. And each of my quarantine tanks are there for very specific reasons. For example, my anemone quarantine tank is there to treat new anemones with antibiotics upon arrival. My coral frag tank quarantine tank is there to observe and remove pests before moving them to the new display tank. As you advance in this hobby, you may want to consider quarantining other livestock besides fish, but if you start out with a fish only quarantine tank, I guarantee you, you are doing better than probably 99% of new hobbyists. So what are the different types of fish quarantine tanks out there? I'm not talking about, about coral quarantine tanks or anemone quarantine tanks or cleanup crew quarantine tanks. We're focusing now only on fish. There are different ways of doing a fish only quarantine tank. You can do one that's cycled and you can do one that remains uncycled. They both work fine, but they both have their limitations. If you go for a cycled quarantine tank with live rock or other ceramic media, there are just certain things you're not gonna be able to add. For example, there are antibiotics that you can't use because the antibiotics will kill all of the beneficial bacteria. There are other products you don't wanna use such as copper because your live rock or ceramic media may in fact absorb them and then leach them out at a later time. If you choose to go for an uncycled quarantine tank, which is actually the type that we recommend, there will not be enough beneficial bacteria in there to keep the ammonia levels down. Down. That means you're gonna have to test really frequently and perform large water changes because that's gonna be your only way to reduce toxic ammonia nitrite from that system. But on the plus side, you're gonna be able to use non-reef safe and non-biofilter safe medications. How many gallons does your quarantine tank have to be? I'm gonna say somewhere between 10 gallons and 40 gallons. If you only have a small display tank and you're only quarantining small fish a few at a time, a 10 gallon tank's gonna be fine. But if you have a larger fish only system or you know there's just gonna be bigger fish that you need to quarantine, you may wanna consider something like a 40 gallon breeder. But if you have no idea what you need, 20 gallons is a perfect starting size for a quarantine tank. So how long does a quarantine tank need to last for your new livestock? A minimum of 21 to 28 days disease and pest free. Best case scenario, you get your new fish, you bring them home, you put them in the quarantine tank, you watch them for three to four weeks straight and there's no disease, they're done quarantining and ready to move to your display tank. 
But if you have even one fish in your quarantine tank show any signs of illness or disease or parasites, then you have to either wait until the fish die or you have to wait until they're completely healed. And only then does that 21 to 28 day clock start again. So this process could possibly go on for months. Let me just say that I have learned a lot of patience from the quarantine process because there have been times when I have had fish in my quarantine tank for three to four months. I was watching some old videos I made about quarantine tanks and I had a list of like 20 things that were essential for a quarantine tank but I have parsed that down to seven essential elements of a quarantine tank. The first essential element is a tank. I would recommend getting a 20 gallon tank but if you're only going to be doing small fish a 10 to 20 gallon tank works fine. You can either go with a glass aquarium. A good place to buy these is at your local big box store during their gallon per dollar sale but you also don't need to use a tank. You could use any sort of food grade plastic container. The only downside with using a plastic tub instead of glass is with glass you can observe the fish really easily and notice if they have disease and it's definitely more challenging when you can't look through the plastic container. Essential item number two is a heater. Nothing at all fancy here. My favorites are the Eheim Jaeger heaters. Just get one that's the correct size so you can keep your tank at around 78 degrees. Number three is a filter and the most simple and most inexpensive type is just your standard hang on the back filter. They come in all shapes and sizes. As long as you have a hang on the back filter that's gonna turn over that water column five to 10 times, and you have a little sponge you can stick in there, it's pretty much all you need. Item number four is a gravel vac. If you follow our methodology, you are gonna have to do frequent and rather large water changes to keep that ammonia level down. So picking up a good gravel vac will help with that. Essential item number five, it's not really essential. You can get away without having it, but we're gonna call it essential. We're gonna call it a light. A light will just help your fish acclimate over time to the light schedule you plan on having in your display tank. It's true that a fish isn't gonna need light to survive, but to get them used to the display tank, it's a really good idea. You don't need anything fancy here. You don't need high-end LEDs or a huge fixture. You can go with something inexpensive at this point. Number six is PVC pipe. You can really use any sort of food grade plastic decoration, but I like to use PVC. It's really easy, it's really inexpensive. You can pick it up at your local hardware store and it provides really good hiding places for your fish. And the final essential item, number seven, is a mesh screen. A lot of the fish you're gonna buy are gonna be jumpers and fish especially like to jump when they're stressed out and quarantine time can be a stressful time, especially at the beginning. So get a tight fitting mesh screen or a glass top and if you don't have one, there are DIY options. Well, everybody, I am rocking a new haircut and a new BRS sweatshirt. And before you comment on the haircut, yes, I have cut my own hair for the last five years. It grows out fine. It doesn't look good at the beginning, but I have saved thousands of dollars. So be nice about the comments. We're going to wrap up 32A because there's just so much to talk about again. So stay tuned for episode 32B because we are going to go through how to build a quarantine tank using all BRS gear and how to do that as cheaply as possible. And then we're going to spend time and answer the most common beginner questions regarding quarantine tanks. And there's actually quite a few out there. And as always, everybody, thank you for watching. Happy reefing. Be well. We'll see you next time.